Hello everyone! Um, so, for those of you who are my students and in my class, you know that class is cancelled today, so this is my attempt to make up for that because of the snow and stuff. For those of you who are not in my class, welcome! This is going to be unedited, uh, that sort of thing, so if I say something stupid, it's staying permanently. So, um, I wanted to give some extra practice in uh, looking at visuals. Here I have R. Uh, so for those following the uh, intro to statistics, you guys haven't been introduced to R, and that's okay. But it makes it easy for me to show you a bunch of graphics, and there's something crazy going on outside. Anyway, um, sounds like a chainsaw. All right, so here is an example of some diagnostic plots, always with my package and the way that I present things. Whether in Jamovi or R, it's always going to present the plots like this. Uh, the first plot is going to be a plot that represents the graphic. In this case, we have the relationship between X and Y and a uh, lowest line overlaid. To the right, we have the normality assumption displayed. So this shows what, uh, this is your visual for the normality assumption. This is your visual for the linearity assumption. And this is your visual for the homoscedasticity assumption. So let's go ahead and interpret these real quick. So this looks approximately symmetrical. Uh, I don't see any major problems with this. So this looks good to me. And then right here again, we're looking for departures from a relatively straight line. And this actually looks really good. So it looks approximately straight. And there's some bendiness right there, but I'm not too worried about that. That's probably just noise. And then SL plot, again, we are looking for a flat line, and this has some bend to it. Uh, whether it's enough to worry about, probably not. Um, so this is about what you would hope for when doing a numeric on numeric diagnostic. So now I'm going to show you one where the uh, assumption of homoscedasticity has been violated, or we have heteroscedasticity. Uh, so this looks fine here, you know, we got some bendiness to the line which shows up in our linearity plot here at the bottom. Here is our normality plot, and that looks pretty symmetrical, maybe some outliers over there, but nothing to worry about. And then in the SL plot here, that's where the problem is. So again, I, like I told you, this is going to show heteroscedasticity because I designed it to be that way. And so what this shows you is as you get higher in fitted values, our uncertainty gets larger. And that actually makes sense if you look at this. You know, the dots are pretty close to the line over here, but they get further from the line as you go up here. So that is a prime example of heteroscedasticity and how you would identify it. Now the next plot is going to have a nonlinear pattern. So we can see that in the first plot. Um, but notice that if you didn't have the lowest line overlaid, you might say, hey, that actually looks okay. In fact, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. For those of you who are not familiar with R, don't worry about what I'm doing here. Don't want to overwhelm you. So if we look at a straight line there, it actually looks like, hey, it fits. But once we put it on a residual dependence plot, holy cow! the problems become a whole lot more apparent. It, it is much more clear now that we have some nonlinearity going on. And residuals look a little bit skewed, positively skewed, uh, probably not enough to worry about, but maybe it is, I don't know. Usually uh, things are okay if you violate the normality assumption and then the SL plot, uh, it's fairly flat. There's a little bit of bendiness, but nothing that I'd worry too much about. And then let's go ahead and do one where everything is fine but normality. And so there is some bendiness here, but you notice you got this outlier, so that line is probably just being driven by that. Um, now I'm looking at the raw plot, but here is the, um, yeah, the residual dependence plot, and you got some bendiness at the end. The residuals now look really wonky though. We have uh, definitely a positive skewness going on and the mode is not in the center of the data. It's really at the left of the data. So something, something funky is going on here with the normality assumption. So this should raise a red flag. Whereas the SL plot looks relatively flat. So that is all for numeric on numeric predictors. Now let's go ahead and look at categorical because with these we don't have to worry about the linearity assumption. 
So this one is going to be one that looks fine. So there is our uh, graphic that matches the results. So we got group B and group A, and then here are the residuals and they're approximately normally distributed. And I mean, you got these weird gaps in the middle, but nothing to worry about there. And then the SL plot, again, this tells us if we have heteroscedasticity and the line is relatively flat, so we're probably okay. Now, on the next one, I'm gonna simulate heteroscedasticity. And so we, you can actually see it from this first plot here, there's a whole lot more spread or uncertainty in group B than there is in group A. Uh, but we'll look at how the S plot, uh, and then you can actually see that now in the SL plot. So it shows a non-linear, or a non-flat line there. So again, we're hoping for a flat line, but we see definitely not a flat line, which uh, makes it a little bit, I mean, this one's actually pretty clear already, but this one makes it a little more apparent. And then the residuals uh, look normally distributed. Now for a categorical on numeric or a grouping variable on numeric visualization and diagnostics. Here we've got the raw data plot, um, and then here is the residuals. And notice those are like really wonky. So we definitely got some what we call zero inflatedness going on. And at the bottom we have our SL plot, and that line is relatively flat. So in summary, this one, problem with the normality assumptions, but everything else looks fine. So that gives you some exposure to a bunch of different graphics um, and hopefully some practice. And now what I'm gonna do is I actually simulated a data set here and I'm not gonna, for those of you who are sad, oh, I guess I showed you anyway. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, I, I created a data set for you, a fictitious uh, data set about relationship satisfaction and it has five variables in it. The primary outcome variable is satisfaction, so we are asking couples the degree to which they are satisfied with their relationship. And then we have uh, recorded a bunch of measures that we think might be related to satisfaction, such as conscientiousness, honesty, communication, so like communication skills, for example, and interests, meaning uh, do the... Um, do the two in the relationship have similar interests or the degree to which they have similar interests? And all these variables have a mean of about 50 and a standard deviation of something like 15. Um, so the, the scales are kind of meaningless, but uh, what you're looking for is the relationship between them. So I have left that data set in the description for your enjoyment and for your practice. So I encourage you to look at all the relationships between like, for example, conscientiousness and satisfaction, honesty and satisfaction, etc. And there are little Easter eggs hidden in there. So there are some occasions where linearity is violated or homoscedasticity is violated or normality, etc., etc. So your job is to find those. If you have any questions, be sure to leave one in the comments, or if you are in my class, let's talk next time we meet. See ya. And I swear I did the pointy thing, but you can't see it. Because, anyway, I'm going to stop there before I look even more stupid.